Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Sunday worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And happy Mother's Day. As we celebrate uh, Mother's Day this morning, our hearts and minds are filled with the thoughts about the love of mothers and mother-like figures in our lives and our love for them. The prophet Isaiah speaks of a mother lo mother's love in a very direct and moving way. In verse 15, he says, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? God presents such an extreme question to the people of Israel who seem to be doubting his love. And he ensures that his love never changes and endures forever. And this is why we're here. We're here to praise God's unchanging love for us. Amen? Amen. So as we uh, sing along with our praise band, um, please stand as you're able. Let us lift up our voice to the Lord. Devoted like a ring of solid gold, like a vow that is tested, like a covenant of old. Your love is enduring through the spring rain and beyond the horizon. With mercy for today, faithful you have been, faithful you will be. Pledge yourself to me. That's why I sing your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. Your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips. You father the orphan. Your kindness makes us whole. You shoulder our weakness. Your strength becomes our own. You're making me like you. Clothing me in white. Bringing beauty from ashes. You will have your pride. Free of all her guilt. Rid of all her shame. And known by her true name. And that's why I sing your praise. Ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be on my lips, ever be on my lips, you will be praised, you will be praised with angels and saints. We sing words. And 14 it reads for it was you who formed my inward parts you knit me together in my mother's womb I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made wonderful are your works that I know very well
morning. Uh, my name is Mike Hollis. I'm with the Red Doors Praise Band. Will you all please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here this morning for Mother's Day. Remembering and celebrating our mothers, for without mothers there is no life. Help us to remember the unconditional love that mothers give us. They bring joy to our lives. They heal us. They guide us. They strengthen us. They feed us. They nurture us. Heavenly Father, we need to be more like these mothers. Help us to go forth this week with your graces and your blessing, Lord, so that we may walk in your ways. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. Amen. Turn and greet your neighbor in Christ's name, and also please make sure you sign the folios in the pews. morning. Today uh, I'm the liturgist. Um, so please uh, look at the bu uh, look your bulletin for announcements. Um, our director of youth and family life, Donna Anderley, is um, seeking committed, uh, passionate volunteers to help form a, a committee that will assist in planning and implementing youth 
ministries and events. So if you're interested in, in being part of this team, please contact Donna. Missions Committee um, is sponsoring Breakfast Food Drive for the Roxbury Social Services um, Food Pantry. So uh, I want to ask you to look at the bulletin for a list of specific items being collected at this time. New Member Sunday is coming. If you're interested in becoming a member of Sakasana United Methodist Church, please contact the uh, office. Um, then there will be a membership class at, at the end of June. Family breakfast will be held on May 18th at 8 a.m. Saturday. Uh, come and enjoy a delicious hot hot breakfast and hear from Jennifer, I guess, Frenzies, Roxbury Library Community Outreach Coordinator, and, and learn more about what the library has to offer the community at this time. Uh, St. Therese Carnival Fernal Cake Sale will be uh, from June 5th to June 8th. So if you'd like to volunteer at the Fernal Cake booth, please fill out the signed up sheet in your bulletin. Vacation Bible School will be July 22nd through July 26th. If you haven't signed up yet, please do so. Um, and please contact Jennifer Antonsich if you have any questions. Any other announcements you want to lift up? Okay. Today's scripture reading is um, the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Children's choir will be singing. No?
What's peace? What's peace? Do you guys know what peace is? Or what it feels like when you have peace? Does it feel good or bad? Good, right? So peace is, technically, when there's no fighting or anger, when everybody's calm, pure freedom, happiness, right? You don't feel mad, you don't feel sad, you don't feel worried. Peace is just kind of calm, right? But, uh, you know, God wants us always to feel at peace. And with ourselves, with our family, with our friends, and sometimes that's not easy, right? How many of you have gotten mad this last week? I know I got mad this last week, right? Right, how about sad? Pretty sad this last week at all, maybe? No, that's good, okay. How about worried? How about worried? Who was worried? I was worried, right? I had a big, I had a big presentation I had to do for class. I was pretty worried, right? So God doesn't want us to feel like that. God wants us to always feel at peace, but that's kind of hard, right? It's kind of hard. The world is a, it's a hard place to feel at peace all the time. So something you can do to help you feel at peace when you feel like you're going to get angry. Does anybody know sign language? A little bit? A little bit? Okay, I'm going to teach you a new word in sign language. I'm going to teach you peace. Okay, ready? Watch me. Like this. children for singing a great song this morning as we celebrate Mother's Day. Would you join me as I pray? <laughs> Loving, gracious God, we give you thanks and praise to you for mothers and mother-like figures in our lives who remind us of your love and presence in our lives. But keep us mindful of the fact that this day is also a difficult day, difficult day for some of us. We ask that you send your Holy Spirit to us as we focus on your word. Open our hearts and minds as we listen to the words of Scripture and teach us your way of peace and reconciliation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So when a little boy had a new sister, he became jealous. I'm sorry, we have a video. Um, so let's watch the video, Mother's Day video first, and I'll be back. Today is Mother's Day, a day when we think about, talk about, and commemorate our mothers. So to all you mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, and mothers-to-be, here is a small prayer for you. God bless these special mothers, God bless them everyone, for all the tears and heartache, and for the special work they've done. Today, we will hear from two mothers about their mothers and about the trials and tribulations of being a mother. Okay, ladies, tell us about your mothers. My mother, she was um, a school teacher 
And so a very organized woman, very regimented woman, um, and very strict, I will say that. I, she, me, I, her, um, it wasn't always easy, um, but we loved respected one another. My favorite moments I remember are baking with her. I think it fit. Apologize for this. About their mothers, and about the trials and tribulations of being a mother. Okay, ladies, tell us about your mothers. My mother, she was um, a school teacher, and so a very organized woman, a very day when we think about regimented talk woman, and, um, and very. Today is Mother's so Day. Your mother, <laughs> grandmother, great grandmothers, and mothers to be. Here is a small prayer for you. God bless these special mothers, God bless them everyone, for all the tears and heartache, and for the special work they've done. Today, we will hear from two mothers about their mothers, and about the trials and tribulations of being a mother. Okay, ladies, tell us about your mothers. My mother, she was um, a school teacher, and so a very organized woman, very regimented woman um, and very strict, I will say that. And so we butted heads quite a bit, but I knew she loved me, I loved her. Um, it wasn't always easy, um, but we always loved and respected one another. My favorite moments I remember are baking with her. I think it fit into her organized way of approaching everything that there was an old family recipe that was very particular and you really had to follow it to a T. And so we would bake together and those were actually probably our funnest times. I was raised and lived in England and when the war came in 1939, um, as children we were all sent out. My mother was still there dodging the bombs and working. As the war progressed, my father brought us back home. My mother was protecting us and, and uh, she tried to help us. I remember she go to the moon. That used to be extra dense. Unfortunately, she got cancer. When I was 16, she died. She was a good mother. You watch them succeed and you just see them so happy like when they do conquer things and you know when they're they're proud of themselves for something that they have been able to do it just makes you really happy the hardest part is watching them struggle and the joy comes at the back end when you see how much they've grown through those struggles and you see the person they're becoming and they're learning how to apply those life lessons in essence to the new challenges that are coming and you watch them grow. Um, just makes your heart happy to see them turn into really good people. As I think being a mother, it's, um, it's the happiest day of your life, especially when you look at that, that little face. But it's also scary if it's for the first time because you just wonder, how are you gonna take care of this little person? But I think as a mother, you kind of have a sixth sense because you know if there's something wrong with your children. So I had three sons and, and we have a, a good relationship and you know, I'm just happy being their mother. Thank you. On this Mother's Day, we would like to leave you with this final thought. Could not be in every place with loving hands to help erase 
the tear drops from each baby's face. And so he thought of Mother. He could not send us here alone and leave us to a fate unknown without providing for his own the outstretched arms of Mother. Quickly by, life's sun rose higher in the sky. Full grown were we, yet ever nigh, to love us still was mother. And when life's span of years shall end, I know that God will gladly send to welcome home her child again, that ever faithful mother. Mother's Day. Thank you, Larry, uh, for creating this video. Uh, I want to thank our uh, digital ministry team that has been formed recently and they work really hard to make these videos. Um, it's actually coming from uh, Sandy's photos and uh, Melissa is participating in the video as a narrator. So I wanna thank all who in got involved in this um, digital ministry. So let me continue my sermon. Um, also want to thank um, Lori and Vi for sharing their memories of mother, their mother, and also sharing their experience as a mother. And it's a precious um, story to, to hear. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. When a little boy had a new sister, he became envious of the attention that she's getting from her mom. One day the boy got upset and jealous to see her his baby sister sitting on mom's lap. He also tried to sit on mom's lap. Mom wasn't able to deal with the ch two children at the time. So she told the boy to wait for her. He then asked his mom seriously, Mommy, can you please put her back in your tummy now? <laughs> well, conflict resolution is one of job descriptions for moms. Mothers are expected to be everyday peacemakers in a car, or a kitchen, in a, on a dinner table. We know mothers deserve more than just one day of thanks. Do you agree? A few days ago, I read an article about the origins of Mother's Day. It wasn't just some phony day made up by a greeting card company or a flower shops. How many of you know the origin of Mother's Day or heard about the origins? Okay. Interestingly, the Mother's Day was deeply rooted in the peace movement predating the First World War. A woman named Julia Ward Howe first suggested that it would be a day for honoring women who bore much of the loss and hardship of war. At the same time, a woman named and Mary Jarvis was working to create Mother's Friendship Day after the American Civil War has ended. She saw it as a way of, of making peace with each other in family, despite their differences created by the terrible fighting. So historically, the Mother's Day began with mother's concern for peace. 
It reminds us of an important reality, apart from the fact that the best, the, some of the best peacemakers in the world have been mothers, from Northern Ireland to Afghanistan and Vietnam. What the reality suggests is that this world is in desperate need of motherly love, which has a great deal to teach us about the nature, the true nature of God. As we celebrate Mother's Day, we are reminded that mothers come in many different forms, and today we celebra celebrate them all. We honor mothers' love and the love of mother-like figures, and we also acknowledge how important the role of motherly love is and has been in building a peaceful world. Especially as mothers and parents, some of us have, have the great privilege and responsibility of teaching our children so much of what it means to live as a peacemaker. As someone said, life is a classroom in which we learn and teach through our everyday moments. And the question is this, in our life, are we telling stories of conflict or, of con or peace? Are we teaching our children to commit their heart to peacemaking, peace building, or to peace faking or peace breaking? Are we encouraging them to live with love and forgiveness or to seek revenge and competition? As we continue to engage this sermon series, Resolving the Heart of Conflict, my prayer is that Jesus, the Prince of Peace, continue to transform us into a peacemaker and guide us in bringing peace to conflict we may be facing in our life. Last week, as we read the story of Jacob and Esau in the book of Genesis, we thought about one of the root causes of conflict, which was uh, our desires and the battles inside. Um, let me get the... Remember this uh, chart that I showed you last week? Um, we thought about two ways of being we can embody in situations of conflict. Heart at peace, heart at war. When our heart's at war, we end up seeing others as object rather than as people. The people who matter like we ourselves matter. But when we see others as counting just like we ourselves count, our heart is at heart at peace. What this idea suggests is that, is that getting behavior right is only the half of the story. Think about situations in your life where you think you might be doing the right things but be doing them with a heart at war. How did things go? Was it successful? We know from our own experience that conflict cannot be resolved only with behavioral changes. It's critical to resolve the heart at war in order to really resolve conflict. We need to commit ourselves to peacemaking, not peace faking or peace breaking. That's what we talked about last week. And if you want to hear more about our, the first message, I want to invite you to check out our church YouTube channel or Facebook page. Because we live in the same world, I'm sure that you all experienced conflict recently, whether it's a big or small. We are all experiencing conflict in everyday lives. If you think you are totally free from day-to-day -day conflict or frustration at home or in your workplace, Please talk to me after the service. I'm going to learn from you. How are you doing, actually? Think about the conflict you experienced most recently, or it could be conflict you couldn't resolve for a long time so that you're still experiencing the pain of an unreconciled relationship now. Now, let's say you commit yourself to resolve your conflict with a heart at peace, whatever that conflict is. Each of you may take a very different approaches to deal with conflict. And those approaches are sometimes helpful or unhelpful in the process of peacemaking. 
And this morning, as we reflect, reflect on Ephesians chapter 4, I invite you to think about your own way or pattern of dealing with conflict and what it really means to resolve conflict in God-pleasing and God-honoring way. According to conflict resolution experts, there are two primary orientations toward conflict resolutions. The concern for self and concern for others. When people encounter conflict, some tend to focus more on concern for others than on concern for self. While others may focus heavily on concern for self to the neglect of concern for others. Based on these two orientations, there are four different types or patterns of dealing with conflict, and we use them in different situations. First, avoidance. Avoiders are the ones who are low on concern for self and low on concern for others. Avoiders may deny that conflict exists, consciously or unconsciously. Even if they acknowledge that conflict exists, what they do is to avoid and withdraw from conflict. But by avoiding conflict, see, by avoiding conflict, they cannot satisfy their own needs as well as the needs of others. Last Sunday, we read the story of Jacob, I mean uh, Esau, the brothers. In terms of their way of dealing with conflict, both Jacob and Esau are avoiders. Though, though they had a dif different goals, Esau initially keep things quiet as though nothing had happened. But remember, inside was filled with a worrying heart and increasing hate against his brother. While avoiding the overt conflict, he was thinking about assaulting Jacob after the passing of his father. His avoidance led him to the escalation of his heart at war. He kept moving toward peace, breaking and ending his relationship with his brother. Jacob was also an avoider, but his avoidance led him to escape from a situation. He ran away from conflict with his own brother, went to a foreign land. Actually, escaping conflict is one of the most frequent responses people make because conflict makes people feel uncomfortable. For example, quitting, quitting a job or uh, leaving the house, the church, when conflict arises, or giving up on a relationship. The problem is that many relationships are too important to walk away from. Of course, avoiding conflict is not always wrong. Sometimes it gives you time to calm down and reflect on the situation. It may bring temporary relief, but with avoidance, conflict almost never gets resolved. It delays finding a solution to conflict, normally making things worse. In this way, conflict are a lot like illnesses, even though it's not an illness. Minor illness may clear up even if we ignore them. It goes away as time goes, right? But major ones will work their way deeper into our systems if we keep ignoring them. It will make us really sick. This is true for many biblical families. For example, King David avoided conflict among his sons and allows, allowed the conflict among some, some of his sons to plunge his family into tragedy. Unfortunately, the failure to handle family conflict led to civil war. Second, accommodation. Accommodators are the people who have low concern for their own needs and high concern for the needs of others because they prioritize, value, positive relationship with others. They don't want any form of conflict to kick into their relationship, so they go out, out of their way to please others, even at the expense of their own needs. Let's say your boss asks you to finish a uh, project and, and he ex expects you to stay late. 
you are tired but agree to stay late, even offer to work through the weekend. Of course, you both will be happy, but you will be exhausted. So if your primary approach to conflict is accommodation, you may be perceived as, as not standing your ground. It is possible that you may be left feeling unsatisfied or feel taken advantage of. What's inter interesting about Jacob in the book of Genesis is that his way of dealing with conflict in his relationship with uh, Uncle Laban was accommodation. At the urging of his mother, Jacob goes to his uncle's house and immediately falls in love with Rachel. Because he is without wealth, he pledges seven years of labor to Laban to secure Rachel's hand in marriage. But his uncle Laban deceives Jacob by giving him Leah instead. And Jacob works another seven years in order to marry Rachel. Later, when the number of livestock set aside for Jacob far outweighs the number going to Laban, Laban's son became angry. The angry of Jacob's success and wealth. Eventually, Jacob had to flee with his household. The third type is competition. Competitors are the ones who have low concern for the needs of others, but high on concern for their own needs. They are exact opposite to accommodators. For competitors, achieving personal goals and success is more important than peaceful relationship. They would do everything to win. They use exercise power to influence others and impose their will often in assertive and aggressive ways. This approach to conflict may enable speedy decision-making, but it brings a strain on relationship, and it could breed hostility and resentment. Finally, there are collaborators. The collaborators are the ones who pay attention to the needs of others as well as their own needs. They seek out solutions that are win-win, that is mutually beneficial. Collaborators encourage uh, joint problem solving. They seek to engage in honest, sometimes difficult conversation and to see if they're, whether they can work things out in, in, a, in a peaceful way. Collaboration is particularly important when we need con consensus in order to implement important decision, or when we are dealing with the, the issues that are too important to ignore or fight over. Each of us has a different conflict management styles, whether avoidance, collaboration, competition, or collaboration. We have different management styles. And people may draw on different styles, approaches to conflict resolution depending on situations and depending on their personality. What's important to remember is though is collaboration is a key to resolving conflict. Without collaboration, the conflict, especially the serious conflict, almost never gets resolved. If you see the bulletin on the fa first page of the bulletin, there is a verse from Matthew 5.9 which we read last week, bless are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. In a Bible version called Message, it is translated this way. You are blessed when you can show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. Given our responsibility of teaching our children what it means to live as peacemaker. We can say you are blessed when you can show your children how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. As a Christian, how can we better practice collaboration and peacemaking in situations of conflict? What leads us to collaboration and cooperation beyond worrying heart? I would like us to pay attention to Ephesians chapter 4, which was the, today's reading. And this is a Paul's letter written in a prison, as, you, as many of you know. 
I believe this passage provides us with some of the fundamental building blocks for collaboration, peace building, when we read it, particularly in the context of conflict resolution. Let me read it again, uh, the vision chapter 4. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of calling you have received. Be completely <clears throat> humble and gentle. Be patient and bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. This passage reminds us of the truth that conflict resolution begins with remembering the calling we have received in Christ, the Prince of Peace. According to Christian Consolidator, Ken Sand, this Christ-centered mindset opens up a surprising option. God helps you to go higher even in the most challenging circumstances of conflict. God helps you to discern the situation of conflict with this question. Is this really worth fighting over? Is this, worth, is this really worth fighting over? We know that our commitment to peacemaking doesn't mean that we should wade into a situation to work it out. Peacemaking doesn't mean that when someone treats you unfairly or if a friend of yours does or says something hurtful, you immediately confront the insensitive person and straighten him or her out. We know that in many situations, it doesn't bring a positive outcome. Sometimes the best way to resolve a conflict is simply to let go of the wrongs others do to you and wait with hope that God will get things right and help you to move toward forgiveness and reconciliation. So try to ask this question when you encounter conflict. If you are encountering a conflict at this time, is this really worth fighting over? Given the call, the calling that we received in Christ, is this really worth fighting over? When you discern this question in the context of the question, whether it's a way of life, a worthy of calling you have received, it gives you a choice to overlook someone's fault or offense. Not because you have no power to confront, but because you have power to love and forgive. It means to show the same patient mercy God shows you. It means to show the same mercy others show you when you make mistakes. And this is what it means to be patient and bear with one another in love, as Paul wrote in his letter. Some of you might have worked very hard toward peacemaking in your relationship. Maybe it could be a long-lasting conflict. Sometimes it can make you feel frustrated, especially, you know, they have no response or interest in your effort to make peace. But when you continue to pursue peacemaking based on the calling you have received in Christ, it makes you less depend on result. Even if the person refused to respond positively to your efforts, you can find comfort in the sense that God is pleased with your action, with your efforts. It allows you to, to deal with conflict in a God-pleasing and God-honoring way. A few, years, a few years ago, I heard about mothers in Israel and Palestine who became peacemakers for their children. These mothers were fully aware of how children would observe their society's perspective toward the other, the enemy, from a very young age. And these mothers wanted to take an active role in working against the fear, the hatred that seep into the consciousness of their children. What these mothers did was to enroll their children in a mixed school with both Jews and Arabs who studied together in a curriculum called <clears throat> Peace Heroes Curriculum, which was designed to teach children what it means to be a peacemaker. 
One of them says, I want my kids to see that even people who used to participate in violent actions now realize there is a better way, the way of peace. I'm sure it wasn't an easy decision for the adults who formerly picked up the weapons of violence against each other now to advocate for peace. But they've done it for their children, for the future of their children. Friends, again, I want to close my sermon with a question I raised in the beginning of my sermon. Are your life telling the stories of peace or conflict? Are we teaching our children to commit their heart to peacemaking or peace faking or peace breaking? Are we encountering them to live with love and forgiveness or to seek revenge and competition? My brothers and sisters, let us live a life worthy of our calling. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's fault in love. Let us make every effort to keep ourselves united in the Spirit, binding ourselves together with peace. Amen. This time I want to invite you to lift up your prayer concerns, joys, celebrations with our church family. Oh Lord, thank you for waking up this morning to pay homage to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pay homage also this day to our mothers, whether we knew them or not. We pay homage to our mothers, whether they show us love or not. We pay homage to them, Lord, because you chose women to usher new life into the world. Through their pain, we have been born onto this earth. We love them just because they are our mothers. Through the pain of Jesus, we have been born again on earth and in heaven. Thank you for mothers everywhere. To mothers who are strong, grant gentleness and understanding. To mothers who are weak, grant grace sufficient to meet their every need. God of our mothers, hear their prayers and fill them with your divine spirit and wisdom. Lord, this morning we pray for our brothers and sisters who are sick. We ask that you put your hands upon them and bless them with your healing, comfort. We pray for those who have got into difficulties of some sort, wrong judgment and action, unwise, unwise change of direction. Remember those who are hurt by something done to them, Betrayal of friendship, broken relationship, act of unkindness. Help us to forgive. Give us power to overlook. Remember victims of recent shooting in their families. We ask for your healing upon the people who 
who are affected by this tragedy. We pray for any facing danger in these days, especially those in the service. We do not forget to bless and pray for their families as well. Oh God, guide and counsel in, in all in leadership in our churches, in our city, in our nation. We pray lastly for ourselves, especially if any of us have challenges and crises to face this week. Help us to be close to all such. On this day of celebrating your love, we lift to you those who have given us life, those who have loved us, O oh God, those who have blessed us, those who have taught us. May your blessing pour out upon the woman who gave us birth and those beautiful, strong women of faith who have been mothers to us along our journey. All this prayer we say in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and power glory forever. Amen. <clears throat>
right, please stand as you're able and join us as we sing our last song. of our calling in Christ. Be humble and gentle and be patient with one another, making allowances for each other's fault in love. Make every effort to keep ourselves united in the spirit, binding ourselves together with peace. As you go forth, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.